people are asking, what is the problem with Africa? And how are we going to solve this problem we are talking about? The former president of Nigeria, Mr. Ulu Segmo Basanjo, the other day was talking about his experience. He was one-time military leader of Nigeria mm -hmm. and two-time democratic president of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He has tested leadership in different levels. And look at this man, 82 years old man coming to see that African democracy or Western democracy imposed on Africans can never work. People were shocked. How can this man who have tested power in different levels, <laughs> talking about the military, talking about the democratic two terms, that is eight years, because mm. in Nigeria, a term is four years. Mm. And this man is coming out to say that the Western democracy is not working. So everybody, we are shocked. And here we are with your own idea from your book, mm -hmm. Afro-Democracy, the New African Order. Mm -hmm. And I have beginning to see everything you said about the presidency being against the people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clevy Johnson is an author of Afro-Democracy, the New African Order. He's from Johannesburg, South Africa. Mr. Clevis, please tell us, why do you say that African democracy or presidency is against the people. Thanks again, uh, Mr. Okocha, for having me online today. It's, it's a pleasure. It's a great pleasure, actually, uh, having this conversation with you online. Um, going straight to the point about uh, the presidency, as uh, we said, uh, as we spoke about last time, um, I believe that everything that has been created, imagined, uh, conceived by the West without the participation of Africans, it's not for the benefit of Africans. I can go okay. even further to even see the AU, who suggested that to us, ECOWAS, like in the Western part of Africa, who suggested that to us, even the United Nations, as long we are not free to conceive all those structures, we will never get any benefit from that. Now, here's the presidency. The presidency was created after they took the decision-making power from our ancestors, from our chiefs, okay. from our kings, from our rulers, traditional rulers. By mm. doing that, they stole the land, and by stealing the land, they control the resources. So whenever they feel like the people are rising to get back what they've lost, because they are no longer here physically, like you know the settlers, uh, the colonists, whatsoever, but their system is still in place in the country. Yeah, so the absolutely. system means they are there. Mm. The system recognizes the person who created it. Mm. The system recognizes its master. So the system is the master himself. When the people start rising to get back what they want, they will just manipulate the system they created. That's why I said the last time that the African country, it's not a country as such. It is a system, the African country. When I look at the African country, it is a system. If they want civil war, they know where to press. If they want uprising, they know where to press. If they want dictatorship, they know where to press. We will just wake up one morning and uh, some other day, then uh, there is trouble in the society. What's going on? The African country is a system. The way they created it, the way they drew all those borders, the way they mixed us with different cultures, knowing mm. that we are different people, yet they put us under the same structure of the presidency. What does it mean? It's like players on the field yeah. are running all after the soccer ball. Ah, just imagine what is that then. There will be clashes, <laughs> uh, there will be whatsoever. We are all racing for one thing, power at the presidency. But why so? Why? <laughs> Who are we serving? Whose legacy is that? Who implemented the presidency in our country? Who suggested that to us? The West. The West cannot suggest anything to us and let us expect benefiting from that. That's it. So the presidency is against the people, whether we like it or not. We just have to give it time. We come to see a reality that it's never no, been we, we, we have beginning to see the reality that the presidency system of government is against the people. Mm -hmm. Because in African democracy, the president has a lot of power that even the corrupt legislation cannot check the president because they are corrupt as well. So the president violates the court order, they do all sorts of things. 
And that is why so many African countries, including my country, Nigeria, we are looking for good person, in the name of good person, who can come there and start changing the system. But the person must have the idea that this system I'm going into is not working. And I cannot do well unless I change the system. And okay. that is why I am going to the mountain of politics in Nigeria and Africa. The mountain of politics in Nigeria in the sense that if you are a citizen, mm -hmm. it is very hard for you to rise up to challenge the government. Mm -hmm. Even when it is in your constitutional power to mm -hmm. do Mm -hmm. Your fundamental human right could be trapped and no one will talk about it. They have their agencies. They could use military against you. Mm -hmm. They could use police against you. So this is what I call the mountain of politics and democracy in Nigeria and Africa. So when I am hearing your eloquent speech and your great idea about mm -hmm. this Afro-democracy, the new African order, how Africans can change and go back to the mm -hmm. ways we were before the invention of this Western democracy mm -hmm. upon us, my fear is this. Mm -hmm. So many people who rose up to challenge the status quo have been killed. Mm -hmm. What is the destiny of so many of us who are ready to go in for it? Well, first of all, why were they killed? That's the question we ask ourselves. We're talking about activists in the country. We're talking about uh, outspoken people. We're talking about revolutionary leaders. Why were yeah. they killed? That's where we go back again to the presidency. The presidency is a system itself. The, the African country is also a system. So the presidency is a system within a system. Now, all they have mm. to do, like uh, as we're saying about the former president of Nigeria, he's calling mm. Afro, uh, Afro democracy. Why he didn't say that, if we have to ask that question, why he didn't say that when he was in power? Because okay. when the man is in power, he's not himself. Uh, yeah. uh, mm. they, 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 they take they take uh, uh, an oath, you know, everyone watching, but within the presidency, behind secret doors, there's another oath there. So the oath they took in France or in London. That, that's what or I'm the saying. one they took in Belgium. That's what I'm saying. So that one we don't know what what is exactly the, the, the contents of, of that oath. So that oath we can just guess, we can just deduce from, from what our society is all about. Like, when the interest of the founder, let me put it that way, when the interest of the founder of the presidency is is uh, shaken, it's, it, it's uh, threatened, then all they have to do is to press the button. Do mm. it or die. When I say do it or die, it simply means <laughs> if you're a revolutionary leader, you're standing against us, then you will die. If mm. you are an elected president and you must do to protect our interests, otherwise we will take you out, you know, they know mm. where to press. There will be like some kind of revolt, you know, people calling for impeachment whatsoever, you know, they will know where to press, you see. So do it or die. So if you want to maintain yourself there, use the military. And if you kill, we won't, you know, we won't make noise. We'll protect you. Know? you. We'll just protect you. So that is the package of that oath, I'm saying, behind the closed doors that us, we don't know. So when the mm. minister, he cannot speak about the political uh, uh, change, the, the governing system uh, change whatsoever. But when mm. he's out, like in the case of the former Nigerian president, we, we won't believe that he didn't see that when he was in power. He saw that exactly that democracy <laughs> is not working. But Are you sure? Are you sure he, Are you sure he saw it when he was in power? <laughs> he couldn't open his mouth right then because there are conditions that only a president knows about that. But once he's out, you know, he's living his, you know, uh, let me not say last moment on earth, but at least, you know, <laughs> he has lived his life. So there's nothing to lose anymore. And then at least he told us the truth that as Africans, we need to go for. We need to change the political system. But to make it in an easy way, not to lose anyone, not to get anyone arrested, that is where we have to go back to our roots. Because what will make someone to rise up? to become a chief rebel or whatsoever, to bring uh, a, a, a group of, uh, of uh, terrorists whatsoever to attack the country. What will allow a black man to do that against his own black people? Nothing there is else. an influence. Nothing there is a hidden influence. influence. Like you're saying, but also nothing else except the cultural difference. That, that we should not deny that. Mm. Mm. As mm. an mm. African mm. man, Mm. In the same mm. country, when you're mm. from a part of a country, maybe from the north or from the south, mm. we have to admit it that when we see someone from far west, 
within the same country there is a mm. difference there you keep there saying is like this one is not my own yeah he's from he's from he's not my own so mm. that mm. alone is enough to pick up weapons to pick up guns and attack that other tribe if i have to put it that way i'm writing the theories wow. of tribalism to bring all this fact clear in our minds mm. that we cannot resolve african issues if we don't debate on the issue of tribalism you are very right mr johnson what you just said that what we make you ask the question what we make an african to pick up gun and kill another african if not tribalism you are very very correct because i think i have witnessed and experienced what you are saying this is a sad reality mm -hmm. that Let me said, for example, you know, Nigeria is one of the most diverse nations on earth. We have mm -hmm. so many tribes. We are mm -hmm. up to 520 languages. Oh. You see, when there are genocidal, you know, actions by the military or the police against the people, mm -hmm. when you check the people carrying out those actions, mm -hmm. they are not from the people. Mm -hmm. They are people from another tribe. Yeah. So it seems that these people don't value another tribe, even though we are in the same territory that is called nation that is the country But that that <laughs> nation that nation don't join people together because we have different ideas we mm -hmm. have different cultures sometimes different religion mm -hmm. different different ideology and what you are saying is a sad reality because in my country nigeria mm -hmm. apart from our national constitution mm -hmm. do you know that nigeria practice other constitution and law for example sharia law we have sharia court we have sharia police and In Sharia court, if you are found, maybe you are drinking beer, they take you to Sharia court, you may mm -hmm. be sentenced to die. They break bottles of beer, they don't allow people to sell beer in some part of the country in the name of Sharia law, and Sharia police can arrest you, and this is contrary to the national constitution. <laughs> so, when you are talking about these cultural differences that mm -hmm. Africa can never get it right, if we did not understand the theory of tribalism, why so many cultures, different cultures must go back to their regions and lead themselves, administrate themselves, mm -hmm. have their own government. I think you have more things to tell us about this Afro-democracy. Exactly. Because I think that would be the solution to what we are looking for. Exactly. And to add it up before you speak, when you look at the eastern part of the country in Nigeria, there is a region called Biafra. That is mm -hmm. the eastern region. And Nigeria have fought a civil war called Nigerian and Biafra war. These mm -hmm. people wanted to go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. And the reason why these people wanted to go their separate ways that led to the war was because of discrimination. Mm -hmm. The other tribes are discriminating them, marginalizing them. Even as of today, as I speak to you, when you look at the federal character system, mm -hmm. you will see that there are some ways that these people have been excluded from the system because they are so-called minority. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I'm beginning to get this sad reality from what you are saying, mm -hmm. that we must go back. Everybody must need their people mm -hmm. because that is the root of democracy. That democracy is the government of the people, mm -hmm. by the people, and for the people. So when your people is not leading you, someone who don't have the same idea with you is mm -hmm. leading you. That is no longer democracy. And that is why I have to give you applause for this great <laughs> idea of Afro-democracy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's a sad reality anyway. It's a sad reality. Oh, uh, now, uh, you, you were just talking about Biafra, uh, that region. I guess, um, is it uh, uh, rich in minerals, that region? Um, absolutely. Um, it's a little bit rich, but the richest part when it comes to mineral resources in Nigeria is the South South, South South. But this South East are also rich in mineral resources. They are very good in well, business. They are now, ready. And now, now to come into this, uh, Mr. Okocha. Now, um, when we look at uh, uh, Africa as a whole, uh, when I personally look at African countries. And uh, the troubles, the the, the 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 civil unrest within the country. If you can just follow the aspects of those fights, it is always the region that is poor in mineral and in resources fighting against the regions that are rich, where the people are born on rich soil. They know the value of their soil and what it contains, so they are ready 
to serve their own people, their own descendants. Now here, the, let me put it clear, you know, the West will then influence the people who are from poor regions, saying that if you don't go for that, those who are rich will never let you as well, you know, be rich. So you have mm. to go for that, knowing that mm. you are desperate, knowing that you mm. are from a poor region, knowing that there is mm. a cultural difference with those who are rich, you will never think twice to pick up a weapon and then to go and kill mercilessly. You will do that because you need what that soil contains. And for that matter, when we look at most of these long-serving presidents in Africa, most mm. of them are from poor regions. Yeah. Most, most of them, like uh, they are from poor provinces, poor, they, you know, their land of origin does not really have the resources. So for that matter, they have to be there. They have mm. to be there to make sure that they can control the resources that are not from their own land. And those exactly. people, when you propose them any political change, any change of governing system, they will never accept that. What is their fear? They don't want to go back and be poor. What is their fear? They don't want to give the power to those who are from rich land to manage their own resources with the fear that they will be uh, in the bad side, they will be uh, uh, left out. So they don't want that. And you are right. People, those are the people that is who right. believe that democracy exists. Those are the people who, believe, who make you believe that there's unity in the country <laughs> because they mm. want to maintain that system. That is the only way for them to control what their lands does not provide. So if today we come with a new political system and we sit together as different tribes, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. <laughs> different tribes as different nations, because I believe that the African nation is made of nations inside the current republic or the current African nation. So yeah. we have the real nations where me and you we are from, and we have the Western nation created above that that we call the Republic. So that's what yeah. I call a, a pseudo nation. It's a fake one because if you ask your fellow brother like where are you from, you can say okay I'm from Nigeria. You yourself you won't be satisfied. You'll be yes from Nigeria, but where? We are. We are. We are. Yeah. Well, Mr. Knevis, so, so. you see, your explanation has touched a lot of things. Mm -hmm. In 2014, when our uh, former president, Goodluck Jonathan, was, you know, was the president of Nigeria, mm -hmm. he proposed a national conference where people of different tribes will come and talk how this nation will continue to go. Mm -hmm. And one of the resolution reached is that there should be a restructuring of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. When you hear that word, restructuring of Nigeria, it scares a lot of political enemies <laughs> because they don't want anything like that. Mm -hmm. And Nigerians wanted a system where people will have their own police. They have their local police that knows their bushes, that knows their people. Oh, wow. But Nigeria has never given them, the presidency has never given them the opportunity to oh, do wow. that. And secondly, people wanted to take care of their resources as well. Mm -hmm. But the presidency has denied them this restructuring. Now, <laughs> you see, when people say Nigeria is great, people call Nigeria great, there is a reason why people call Nigeria great. Nigeria before was in regions. The government was in region. We have regional governments. Everybody was administrating their territories. And the before they now change, yes, we have a republican constitution, we have different kind of constitution in Nigeria, we have 1963 constitution. When you go through these documents, you would understand that what made Nigeria great is not the presidency system of government. Mm -hmm. What made Nigeria great is not what we are practicing today. But mm -hmm. when the country was in regional government, Different regions were administrating their people. They mm -hmm. know their people. They know how to take care of their people. And the people knows how to hold you responsible. Mm -hmm. If you do not do well because they belong to them. But if the leader is not from your tribe, any mistake you make, they will say because it's not from your tribe, you are against him. Mm -hmm. So there is a tribal problem mm -hmm. in African democracy that we must return to our roots. By the way, it is these so-called Western people that amalgamate us together. They call mm -hmm. it amalgamation. They bring people from different tribes, different yeah. regions, 
different religion, different language, people who don't have anything in common, okay. they call them nation. And that is contrary to the definition of nation. Exactly. Because the definition of nation is supposed to be people in exactly. unison that have one thing in common. Okay. But this is the problem we are facing. So, Mr. Johnson, where do we go from here? Well, now, where do we go I'll from here? The, I will take the context of China. You know, more than, uh, I don't know, a billion of people in that country represented by one man, the president, against, actually, he's saving them from uh, the predatory behavior of the worst. But when it comes to Africa, more than a billion of people represented by about 50 to 44 to, I mean, 54 to 55 leaders, the number of mm. African countries. Mm. But despite that huge number of leaders, we are all exposed to the worst. Now, mm. if uh, we have to talk about a context, from where are we going about this? I believe that Africa will not develop unless the issue of unity is addressed. But how yeah. can we address the issue of unity in Africa? There will be no unity if we don't consider our roots. There will be no unity if we don't consider our values. Because when uh, there is a leader who is not from my tribe, it is obvious that that leader will not respect my values, will not respect my tribe. We don't Absolutely. respect my culture. Absolutely. Now, the moment you won't do that, it is my identity that the person is not respecting. That is my true identity. Not according to my passport, not according to the Republic. My true identity is from within my DNA, from my ancestral roots. Now, that is so revolting within, within the person. It is so revolting. Mm -hmm. And the moment there is this type of revolt within me, you mm. will not expect me to unite with someone who's from far north, far west, far east, uh, far south, who's doing that against me. There'll be no way. Yeah. And if yeah. there's no unity within the country, yeah. how can we unite at the continental level? There is no way. So there the way is a lie. The regional institutions like ECOWAS whatsoever, Ecowas. they're just lying to us. Uh, ECOWAS, AU, these are clubs of incumbent leaders. Definitely. It is just a club of incumbent leaders. Definitely. De so, oh by God. having regionalism in the country, the West, actually the maker of the presidency, the owner of the presidency, will have to deal with all those regions in order to benefit from resources from different regions here and there. But when there is a presidency, the West only deals with one person, as I said last time, just one signature. And if they don't obey, use the military, use the police, use these. That is what they are doing. That is the reality. That is what, that, that is what they are that. doing. So, the only time they are against us doing what we want so that everyone will benefit from the resources of our countries, it is the presidency acting against the people. It is the presidency acting against the people. So even if the leader campaigning is of good heart, good faith, whatsoever, the moment will get there, he will turn to a monster. That is like the second oath. I won't even say that it's the second oath. It's the first oath of the presidency. The second is the one they show in the public because they yeah. won't let you to become a president if they are not assured that you are going to serve them. So for them to be assured that you're going to serve them, you are taking the first oath. In yeah. a secret, behind closed door. And that is when, well, they come and show us in public that this is the elected president. But, uh, <laughs> oh my, I, I still can't believe that in Africa. So, Mr. Knavitz, what would be the solution to this? What do you think that would be the well, solution? Where do we start from here? As, as you say that we need regionalism. We need police that per region, per state, per nation, per, per province, that will have to look after the people, they have something in common. I spoke about that in the book. I spoke about that in the book, that we cannot have a national police in the context of the Republic, because the chief of the police can be from far north. When it comes to dealing with people from far south, he will have no mercy. He will have that no mercy. It. So the police is all about the safety of the people. Let it be in accordance to the region where people are having a common value. But when mm. it comes to the military, because the military deals about the defense of the borders, yeah, no problem. We can have it mixed, you know, you know, the, 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 the recruitment across the country. And I also believe that in that case, 
the military should be led not by the minister of defense but by a council of defense because if there's a council of defense representing all the tribes representing all the states representing all the regions sitting in the department of defense there will be no one that will be easily bribed by the worst okay send the military over there to go over and overthrow such a governor send the military over there to go and kill such a traditional leader because he's, he's opposing us to to exploit his, his, his resources from his land, send the military over there. There will be no such if the, the, the military is led by a council. And here comes uh, terrorism from any region of the country. There will be no thinking twice, like I am the minister of the defense. I am close to the president. We are from the same tribe. We are mm. serving the worst. Then the terrorism will be taking time. We'll be pushing further, killing people as if the army is powerless. No. The army is not powerless, but the chief of staff, the Ministry of Defense, is just serving the presidency that is against the people. So let them kill them, let do whatsoever. We are pushing the Western agenda, but you know, hiding in the name of the presidency being weak, hiding in the name of the country, not having enough resources. It is wrong if the military is led by, uh, by a council. I'm not seeing where terrorism will prosper. I'm not saying where, wow. I'm not seeing all that, you know. So wow. that is the fact. Now, under Afro-democracy, I believe that we don't need a presidency. Because when, um, when uh, recently, recently, Nigeria almost intervened against Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. They, they almost intervened there. What was the point? It is a president who's like, yeah. I have to, I have to. All of us black people were were ashamed of that reaction. We were like, this is black like us, but what is going on? But just imagine if it was a council of leaders, like, you know, different uh, leaders from different states of the country sitting there. The West won't have one person to convince because exactly. they will be opposed. They'll be like, exactly. no, I cannot do that. But when you are alone, that is when I said in the book, there is a principle of do or die. When I say do or die, in that die, it's either you face humiliation or you face death. They can just kick you out. They can just, you know, expose your crime because Mr. Okocha, I believe <laughs> for us to have a president in Africa, first of all, you must have criminal records. That is also something I'm saying. There is yeah. no clean African president. You I must sure. have you must have criminal record first, not against the people in your country, but the kind of crime that is also implicating the worst. Yeah. If you don't have that, it will be very difficult for you to be elected as a president. There and must why? be something that they can hold you accountable for the moment you start turning against them. So here is a president. They say, okay, you have to do this. You have to do that. Hmm. As a person, you feel like, let me do, uh, no, let me not do that. But when you look at the other side, the dark side of yourself, your crimes and so on, uh, no, 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 you don't want to face that. You don't want to face prison, you know, from presidency to prison. It's something like no one can just accept like that. What you do, you will go against your own color. You will go against your own lights, you know. So that is the situation right here. Well, in up for democracy, I believe that the power should be returned to our traditional leaders. When it is returned to our traditional leaders, those leaders are from a particular state, from a particular nation, from a particular province region. They have people in common that they have a strong bond with. Then yeah. they, will, they will take good care of those people and exactly. have a certain government. Now, yeah. when we do that, when we close the presidency, we weaken the West. The West will be weak in our country because if they want to steal oil, they will have to talk to all those traditional leaders. It is a good, it is a big, it is a huge challenge for them. It will be like taking them back during that time of colonization when they came here in the first place, first time of history, where they have to go from each uh, village, from each tribe, you know, where they have to go to each, you know, to convince all those leaders so that, you know, they can create a republic. So we have to take them back there. Just that mm. there's a difference. If back there, our leaders were not educated, maybe they did not know about this modern time whatsoever, 
today our traditional leaders are different. You know, they have education. You know, they have their children who are educated. They have citizens of their lands who are educated, successful business people. So they will not just be deceived like that by a certain Western mind coming to to to, to, to possess what their land uh, 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 produces. So so that is that is what we have to do. So at the bottom of this, Mr. Okocha, to make things go yeah. smoothly. We have to assure those who are in power that no one is going to lose. If they are maintaining the Western system because they believe that is how they can have their hands on oil, on gold, on them, on anything. And by having their hands on, they are giving uh, most of it to the worst. And, you know, the small percentage, you know, remaining, that is what they are sharing among themselves while the people are suffering. So if we can break that complete of the presidency and assure them that everyone will benefit in uh, uh, in the country and under Afro democracy. I'm not seeing how those leaders are going to resist because their only motivation, their only reason of resistance is the fear of losing what they have, is the fear of being victims like other people are, is the fear of being rich today and tomorrow being poor. That is the fear pushing them to maintain this system. Otherwise, I think, I think what you are saying is very, very correct because there is this... Uh... ...of the indigenous people of Biafra, uh, Nandekano. This man has been in detention since 2021 and there have been a series of court cases in Nigeria. But I noticed that the governors from this mm. eastern region they are afraid of this system of IPOB that are about to come because they believe that if we give these people the opportunity mm -hmm. to exercise their own idea, mm -hmm. they will take everybody to their own side, of which they have succeeded doing. Mm -hmm. They have done. Mm -hmm. Now, the fear of these governors is that let this leader remain in custody. Imagine the governors from that region mm -hmm. are even working with the federal government to make sure they keep the guy, the man in detention. be relevant again politically and otherwise they are afraid that they are going to lose their power they are going to lose their political value they are going to mm -hmm. lose everything because when this man comes out nobody listen to the governor again nobody listen to whoever you are in the region they listen to this man mm -hmm. the canon. so these people are now afraid so when you were elucidating and explaining the afro democracy mm -hmm. why people who have new idea on how to lead themselves should also tell people who are already in power that they are not going to lose their value. How possible it is because the value is what has trapped us. <laughs> the value is what has destroyed us. What? So if you are telling them that they don't, they can't lose their value, that you still give them position, people will not buy that idea. What do you have to say that, about this? That's it. That's it. So in the book, The New African Order, I've, I've answered all this. So I'm going to put it as well here for the viewers and for the sake of others as well. Now, mm. um, what is value in politics, actually? Why is this man here running for the presidency or running for, you know, uh, what is value, actually? It's money, the resources. Because <laughs> that value is not, it's not just the title for excellency whatsoever. It is for the money those people are going there. Now, the money is coming from the resources. Even the political system imposed on us by the world, it's all about the resources. So we are all converging towards the resources. But who are the mm -hmm. owners of the resources? It's me and you, the people. Yeah. Now, what can we do to appease the heart and the mind of those leaders to understand that this is the new era? We are going to the era of Afro-democracy. But the resources of the country will be shared among all of us equally. How can you do that? In the book, I suggested that. The countries in Africa must establish a structure, an economic structure that will supervise all uh, the, the, the sources of revenues, you know, be it naturally, be it, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, businesses, anything, you know, they must establish that and that will be represented by a council and that council will be uh, uh, the setting of uh, all state or all nation provinces all regions in the country so if we have 10 regions let 
each region has a representative in that council that will supervise all the revenues, you know, all the source of revenues in the countries, you know, the companies of exploitations, all those, you know, whatsoever the country is making will be put in the treasury. Now, when it will be there, it is not in the hands of one person. It is not in the hands of the president, whereby the West can just say, steal the money over there, send it to us. No, no, no. It is represented by a council, represented by all the regions of the country, so each and everyone has a say there. No one will steal. Mm. The people steal because there's only one person, like the head of the institution, the head of the bank, you know? So no one will steal. So by that time, as the country is... Uh, 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 moving in terms of regionalism, when you have all those revenues, then you can share that equality. You can share that equality per region, you know. So we just to say that even if in the country there is a poor region that is unable to make, you know, to, to have access to oil, whatsoever, by establishing such a structure, each and everyone will have the share of oil that is even coming from the far region from them. So there will be nothing like, you know, being jealous of those who are from the rich lands because there's a structure, an economy, uh, a financial structure that is established and represented by the whole country. Wherever, wherever, when they sell oil, for example, whatsoever the money that is made there is shared equally per each state so that they can develop themselves. So in that way, I am not seeing whoever will be afraid that today I'm rich, Today, I'm managing the, the revenue of oil, and tomorrow, I'll lose it if we change the system. So each and everyone will be valued. Each and everyone will be considered in that manner. Because value, we are talking about in a political, in a political context, it's all about the resources. It's not, it's not about uh, sitting in the parliament and uh, what do they do there? They do nothing for the people. Many of them even sleep in the parliament. We've seen many pictures of them just sleeping in the parliament. So... <laughs> The value is all about the resources. We have to establish a structure that will share the resources of the country equally among each and every region so that they can develop themselves. So if is there a region that is not doing well, there will be nothing such as people of that tribe of that region blaming the other that we are not prospering because of you, because the leader is from your tribe. There will exactly. be no such. So there will be peace then by then. By that time, there will be unity. That is where unity will come from. <laughs> but how long? How long will it take? How as long? I am saying, as <laughs> I am saying, if today, if today we decide to shift from democracy to Afro democracy and establish structures as I have largely developed in my book, if today we decide to do that, it, it's nothing like... Uh, in my book, I've spoken about if we can just take a year, we can achieve that. If we can just take a year, we can achieve that. Mm. But guess what, Mr. Okosha? If that can come out in a parliament, debating about that, we can still find a common ground to move further. We are not going to lose as black people. The only loser in this process, in this transition, is the West. It is not us. Yeah, it is not. Actually. But but there are some people that the West has has been using already. So those people's idea does not support all these kind of ideas that you are talking about. Because no. for them, they believe that they are going to lose as the West are going to lose as well. Now, as as we can say that again, here is the country of millions of people. Those people they are in leadership. They are from a certain tribe because mm. they usually uh, they usually. Uh, 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 Focus the mind of the people of their tribe, you know, to give them support. Like, you have to support me because if I'm out, you too will suffer. But go and see the people of those tribes. It's not everyone who's benefiting from the leader who's from the same tribe as them. Mm. You will see that the leader is from a certain tribe. The people benefiting the most are the people from his family, his clan, and then, you know, the people from the same tribe at large. So there are always, you know, some people who are left out, even though they are within the same tribe. That is what Lumumba call Robin Hoodism. That is <laughs> the system of robbing the poor, the majority of the people. That's it. So they can say that they are against that, but they don't have the full support within their own tribe to start with. Talk less of forest tribes within the country. 
So <laughs> they they are just like a drop within you know a drop of water within the ocean. Easily they can be contained because when the people at large will realize that we are going to benefit from this process, even the people who are from the presidential tribe, they'll be like, there's no need for us to be standing always as enemies of those who are not favored by this presidency. There will be some common sense that as long we are not losing, as long there will be a structure that we're sharing wealth of the country equally among all of us for self-development, I'm telling you that very same leader who's a sellout, who's busy giving the country away to the worst, will be overthrown just like that. He'll be he'll be pushed out by his own people. He'll be pushed out by his own people. Because at the end of that, it is his family, his clan, benefiting the most than anyone else within the same tribe. That is the fact. That is the fact. Wow. Mm. Wow. Anyway, uh, Mr. David Johnson is an author of Afro-Democracy, The New African Order. His book is all about the exposition of the Western democracy that was forced on Africans and the possible way of overcoming it. Everyone in Africa, everyone in Nigeria, every black man in African continent must realize that this democracy is not working for us. Mm -hmm. So it's a sad reality. It's not what you just hear. It's what you feel and see within you. Mm -hmm. You see the reality of what he's talking about. So his idea is that there should be a way where power should be returned to the people. The power should return to even the traditional rulers who knows their people. Mm -hmm. The people should have their own ponies. The people should have their own legislation. The people should rule themselves. Mm -hmm. That the presidency is like a government that is very far. That even in Nigeria, as we have local government, state government, the presidency influence will still destroy all these levels of government. Mm -hmm. Because if you do not align with the presidency, they are going to kick you out there. Mm -hmm. Because the presidency alone controls the police. They control the military, they control the air force, they control the custom. So they have too much, too much power <laughs> in them that even the corrupt legislation cannot even check them. Mm -hmm. So they go away with everything they are doing in the name of presidency. That so the that way, is the issue. That is, by the way, what is making the strength of the West in that African country. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. That is why the West is having much power because the West have realized that if they want to destroy Nigeria, for example, if they want to do anything in Nigeria, they don't need Nigerians. They need only one person. That's it. The president. That's it. And you, you made mention that most presidents in African continent have past history, a criminal record in abroad, mm -hmm. that when they want to misbehave, they will be warned. We have your history. Mm -hmm. We'll open it. And that is the sad reality we are facing in our country, that, Nigeria. That, that is true. You see, like our president was one time, I will not call him as confit, but he was, he forfeited about $460,000 as far back of 1993 in the United States from the process of narcotic trafficking, from the drug process. You understand? Mm. And there are a lot of um, issues that came out during this election. They said he forged his Chicago State University result mm -hmm. and they they took the case to united states after everything they still returned to the court in nigeria the court in nigeria did not even look into those evidence they pushed it to one corner because that is the system the system is positioned to destroy us now, now uh, uh, and, if i can add something to that now here is a leader in that position believe me whatsoever it takes for him to be free he will do that even though it's it's it, it concerns killing even though it concerns, you know, uh, uh, stealing public funds, even though it concerns invading another country, he will do that. Yeah. Because that is the price. Just to remain in power. That's it. <laughs> but, it. But that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate. And I think in our next video, I am going to, I'm going to look more in your book, in our next video, so that we are going to focus more because we are facing um, a lot of crisis in Nigeria. Mm. We are going to focus more. Nigeria is a country, see, when you hear about Nigeria in other countries, mm. you will understand that this country is supposed to be one of the leading powers in the world. Definitely. Because we have all the things. Nigerians are intelligent. We are very hardworking. Mm -hmm. We have the natural, the mineral mm -hmm. resources, everything it takes to make people great. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has it. But the problem is, why is contrary the case? 
Why is opposite the case? Instead of us to continue to become great, we are diminishing in power and trust everything. Talk of our passport. Our passport is one of the lowest ranking passports in the world. Why? So these are the issues that I think that people should continue to put into their mind because a revolution does not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. People must be educated of the reason and purpose of any revolution. Mm -hmm. Because if people are not educated, when the revolution happens, people will leave you alone. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the reason why we are trying to tell people that this is what's supposed to be happening in Africa, that power should be returned to the people. That amalgamation that happened in Nigeria is supposed not to happen. There are so many countries in Africa that European, they came, um, Britain came, Belgium came, France came, mm -hmm. they just drawn like, this is your border. This is your border. Mm -hmm. This is your border. They gave us border, not the one made by ourselves. That is the they gave us right? name. Mm -hmm. Yes, for example, Nigeria. Nigeria has no meaning in Igbo language. Nigeria has no meaning in Yoruba language. Nigeria has no meaning in Hausa language. So that word Nigeria has no basis in our cultural system and values. There is no meaning of the word Nigeria in our own language. Wow. And that is our country. So I understand what you are saying, that we must go back to our regional governments. But it's not going to happen overnight. And that is my fear. But I think someone should start it. And that is why you have started the idea. But it's not going to be easy. I want to encourage you. It's not going to be easy. You know, when I am going to give you courage to continue to to do it and um there will be some strategies i'm also going to map out things that you are going to do people have to hear and understand your idea of afro democracy but i must tell you the truth it's not going to be easy that, that, that's it for. The, the, the reason, the reason why it's not going to be easy the, the reason why but it's possible it's possible yeah the the, 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 the reason why uh, uh, we're here uh, uh, following that ideology of afro democracy because uh, the easier it looks, that is where the worst as well is, you know, making us facing the repetition of our own history. You know, we hmm. have a revolutionary leader today, tomorrow, you know, he, he lay down some good foundation and the day after he's gone, everything is laid down, is also taken out with him. So I know it's not going to be easy, but uh, at the bottom of that, I even see in the book, as in Africa, we haven't started fighting with the worst yet. The biggest... Uh, African fight ever against the worst will be by the time Africans will pronounce themselves against the presidency. By the time they will say that we are closing mm. the presidency, we are now moving back uh, to our, you know, to our uh, traditional leadership whatsoever. The way it was at the beginning, before the coming of the West in Africa, that is where we will see the real face of the West. Mark my word today, as I'm saying. We've been seeing them killing our leaders. We've been seeing them creating civil wars in our countries. We think that that is the real face of the worst. They haven't shown us anything yet. By the time Africans will decide to do away with the presidencies, that is when we will see the real face of the worst because they will have no entry, no entry existing in Africa. They will have no voice. They will have no ways existing in Africa again from then. So what they will do, it will be something that we've never seen before. But I'm also optimistic in the way that the moment we will value ourselves, you know, moving back towards our roots, we'll be much stronger than we are today. We'll be much stronger. What does it take for a president to equip the military? He must be a revolutionary. But when it is a democratically elected president, the military is weak. For what reason? Now, here we have a revolutionary leader that can be taken out anytime soon as well. We don't know. We don't wish that. But we know uh, the African country is a system. Now, if we can have a structure whereby we don't have the presidency, but we have this kind of leadership that can allow us to decide economically, politically, and also in terms of defense of our lands, well, I'm not saying with all the youth in Africa how the world is going to stand against us militarily. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Will be a power rising. Yeah. Will be that. Yeah. So yeah. it is not and what you are saying, that is the way. What you are saying now, what you are saying, 
this your idea is just the power and the strength of most of the European countries and other countries in the world. When you see that in, in Europe, we have what they call European Union. Mm. Apart, apart from NATO, that NATO has one mandatory, that if you come to fight any country now among the NATO countries, all of them will fight you. Mm. If Africans should come together to have one mandatory like that, our strength should supersede even the NATO. Definitely. Because we have the human resources. Definitely. We have the military power and so on and so forth. Now, come to talk about free trade too. In the European Union, anyone from any country can travel to any other country, you need friendly and so on and so forth. But it's not like that in Africa. But before they came to Africa, it was like that. Well, they have dismantled us if you can allow me. and made their own countries to be like this. This is, this is. I don't know. I don't know the adjective I will yeah. use to quantify. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Okosha, now, uh, um, you, you've spoken about something uh, in terms of defense, military, whatsoever. Uh, you also spoke about economy. Now, we cannot do this free trade or uh, defend a fellow you know, African country like in the NATO fashion as long mm. we still republics, as long there's a president of the republic. How many summits did we have there in ECOWAS? How many summits summits did we have in the AU? But when you see those leaders coming back, nothing's changing. Simply because it is not them. They have to do as they are instructed. But if it was another type of leadership, it doesn't take us a year just to start creating a military power in Africa. It doesn't take us a year to create a free trade in Africa. It's, 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 it's something easy. Just a matter of one, two summits. We'll get it done. Now, when hmm. we talk about free uh, movement of the people across Africa, uh, I don't want to be taken in, 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 in a context that is... Uh, uh, that is somehow, but I believe, mm. Mr. Okocha, we can say it like uh, we are usually calling for uh, open borders in Africa. It's a good thing. But here you are, oh, here I am in a house, and in that house, there is food that I don't have access to, and I'm hungry. Okay. Will I just open the door to an outsider to come in? And enjoy that food, it is not easy. That's why we see all this kind of, you know, hate among foreigners, uh, uh, hate among black people in a country, uh, all this xenophobia thing. It is because those who are on that land are hungry. They're not benefiting from that land on their own. But if today, when you go to Europe, you see white people, they don't even care about us. Why? Because they're benefiting from their countries. They have, they have all the social benefits necessary. So when you come in as a black man, as a migrant, they don't care about you because they are already benefiting from the food within the house. Do you get it? Now, here it's me benefiting from my house, from my country, as a white country, European country. There is a neighboring European country. Do you think if we say, let's open the borders, will there be anyone who opposed to that? Because in your country, people are served well socially, financially, in my country as well, so there will be no tendency of someone leaving his own country just to go and stay in another country. There will be no, there will be yeah. no such. But in Africa, oh my, I'm from the poorest country. You open your border as a rich country, but forget about that. When I get there, I want to come out. Now the people who are oh in that country who are also suffering under the presidency, who are also suffering under the leadership of the republic, how will they feel? How will they feel? That is when they start attacking, you know, migrants. So that is actually the root of xenophobia. The root of uh, self-hate, as they keep saying that, it's simply because the people who are originally from such a country are not served socially according to the revenue of their country. They are in a certain house filled with food, but they are they are suffering. They, 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 they have hunger. They, they are not eating. So how they just let people from outside to come in. So that is the issue. Before we talk about open borders, we have to go back and value ourselves first. It all starts by giving the power back to those traditional leaders to take care of their own. That is where they will be served mm. equally according to the, the resources of their lands. By that time, they will be satisfied enough to open the door to people to outsiders, it's like that, you know, it's like that, you know. So the person who has more 
is be open to 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 a needy to a person who is suffering in the street than the person who does not have anything it will be like okay uh, this is the only one i have huh? okay i can still you know there will be like this kind of uh, but the one who has it abundantly like oh, okay we can give you that is the reality you you come oh, they welcome you they, you know they give you whatsoever because the people who are originally from the country are happy now we take that same context in africa it doesn't match we cannot just open the borders like that as long we still republics because people are impoverished in the country so they will not tolerate other people just to come in we are poor you come in in numbers that impoverishment will expand it will be like you know we have to accommodate all of you in this impoverished yeah. situation it will not be easy that is why africans will still stand no open borders no open borders but just give them the social benefit make them happy themselves they will recognize their fellow black brothers they, they, they will recognize them and they will call for open borders simple as that you know. so that is a, a call for a new system is what all these things take it is that is afro democracy i've answered all those questions in i can even i can even give you a structure on how i even say that this issue of borders will not be the call of politicians for this to happen why because i've seen in african countries like in south africa there are zulu people in south africa there are also people speaking zulu in zimbabwe so today let's say we give power back to the traditional leaders that traditional leader has the mandate that mandate is universal it was like that created by god given to him like that you know yeah. when that traditional leader has power it is obvious he will recognize his people no matter what it will it will it will, it will it will obvious that he will recognize his people no matter what and by that time what do you think he will do he is a traditional leader from this side of the border there is a traditional leader from the other side of the border they have common values common values means one people they will come together and then in time that border will not exist anymore <laughs> because they will come together those people that is right politicians calling for that the border will vanish on its own just like that <laughs> it will that is right history. <laughs> that is right that is right so um before we come to the end of this broadcast i want you to elucidate more the role the traditional rulers have to play for this coming or for this creation of a new system called afro democracy because it seems that everything they are doing in political democratic system of government these traditional rulers are left behind so they are not part of the decision making now like i made mention about the case that is going on in nigeria about uh, the leader of indigenous people be afraid of the can't know you know now the traditional rule that the people of that zone want him released they want him to be released mm-hmm. but the federal system of government don't want him to be released because they see him as a threat mm-hmm. even the governors the political governors they have different ideology from the people mm-hmm. from the traditional rulers mm-hmm. and the people so these people in government don't want him released but the people want him released that's why i'm saying that the traditional rulers they are not part of the decision making so how would they come in what role would they play in this creation of a new system of democracy called afro democracy oh, in well, africa well first of all when when the african leader is arrested for a political opinion whatsoever he's not yeah. a threat to me and you but is a threat to the system in place is a threat to the presidency indirectly is a threat to the worst mm. that is it so it is a long process going on there now mm. here are the traditional leaders i believe that they are not left out they are not left behind all of them because when you see even during a uh, national celebration national day something like that they invite the traditional leaders they are part of that the the mm. concept of the republic the concept of the presidency was just like we traditional leaders are giving our powers off to create a presidency but the men there must make sure that they respect the agreement according to our land according to our resources and according to our traditional people because we are traditional leaders there now what happened in time the west came and changed the mind of the president he is no longer doing as the agreement was at the foundation of the republics they are not doing that way anymore they will take from the rich land but they won't give back to the people who are from that rich land 
most of the resources mm. going outside of the country and the people are impoverished. So the traditional leaders are not left behind. They are there mm. and they are hoping that there will be a good president who will do exactly the right thing. They are there. Now, mm. what can we do right now is to also call to the attention of those leaders because the longer they expect a good president to come in, they are making the people suffer. You are a traditional leader to a certain land, uh, to a certain group of people. So now you gave your mandate to the president who is not caring for those people. So it is falling on your head as a traditional leader. So it is also up to them to stand up and start claiming their right to leadership because the presidency has failed. But you will see that most of those traditional leaders are just quiet. Why are they quiet? Because the presidency is paying some of them. is paying them money. Is giving them benefits. Is giving them material benefits. As, as, uh, as uh, spiritual leaders, as traditional leaders, while the president is there doing whatsoever he wants. So it's actually, uh, if I can, I'm not uh, disrespecting the traditional leadership, but it is actually like bribing the traditional leader. Like, this is your share, okay? And let me do whatsoever as the agreement during the colonial area, whatsoever. So the traditional leader as well will be quiet and then expecting that the president will come and build schools in his land, come and build hospitals, whatsoever. But what could happen if it was himself controlling everything, managing everything, living in that land, he will build that land because he has the mandate over that land spiritually and physically. That is universal. He will take care of his land. By taking care of that land, he's taking care of that people, of those, of those people. And now, if those people are taken care of in each and every region, we will realize that it is the whole country with the people who are happy. The border will fall because they will recognize their own fellow brother on the other side of the border. Yeah. There will be free trade. And by doing that, there will also be military power build up. So that is, the traditional leaders must now stand up and call back for their decision-making power because the presidency has failed. And also at the beginning of all this, it was their power of decision that was conveyed to the presidency by the West. So it is mm. their right to get it back because the presidency has failed many mm. times over decades. So what is another chance that must be given to the president? None. They've exhausted all of that. So our call to traditional leaders is to stand up and start picking up the momentum right now because the people actually depend on the traditional leaders, not yeah. on the presidency. Yeah. That is the fact right there. We don't depend on the presidency. The presidency is for the worst. The presidency is between the people and the worst. That is right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clavis Johnson. This is your an hour and 10 minutes exposition of the Afro-democracy, the new African order, is something that every African must hear. And we'll continue in this crusade. We must continue to share this message to make sure that a lot of people have it. That there is a reason why we should return the power to the people, the original owners of the power, mm -hmm. before the British, the France, the, mm -hmm. before those people came into Africa. The power was with the people. But this democracy is not giving the power to the people because the people are dying, they are in security, but the people doesn't have what it takes to help themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like they have removed the power out of their hands mm -hmm. to the presidency. And the presidency is not close to the people. The so-called local government and state government are very weak because of the presidency. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This idea is generous. Yes. And I think at the end of the time, we must find something out of it. But So the traditional rulers must make sure they play a role so that the power will return to the regional government. Mr. Okosha, it is obvious that if today traditional leaders open their mouth and start saying that, mark my way again. <laughs> if they open their mouth and start saying that, they will have the full support of the people. Provided that the resources of the country 
mm. must be shared equally. Then all traditional leaders across the country will speak one mouth. Give me back my power of decisions. Provided that the resources of the country will be shared equally among all of us, then I'll take care of my people. They will have the full support of the people. The presidents will be left actually, out. Actually, actually, they will have the full support of the people. There That's is no doubt guaranteed. about that. Mm. But do you know my fear? Mm -hmm. Presidency, like someone can become a president without the support of the people. And okay. that boils down to this situation where a president can equally punish the people that don't have his support. Because... If a president, if you want to become a president, you have the money, you have the power, you have the support of the West and the incumbent president, you can link yourself to power. The electoral body could be subjected to your own, you know, decision. You may mm. tell them, this is what I want you to do. If the person did not do it, the person will be threatened. I am afraid. Mm -hmm. My fear is this. Yes, the traditional owners, they have, they have respect. Mm -hmm. They still have power to mm. act if they want to act. But the people, indeed, will support them. That is not the problem. The problem is how can they win this power of supremacy against the presidency and against these so-called leaders? Because the people and the traditional rulers are together. They mm -hmm. feel the pain. They know what is going on around them. Mm -hmm. But the problem is just the insensitive government out there. Mm -hmm. Who are not listening to the people mm -hmm. and when we begin to you know need this crusade like this won't you think that the president will also use military on us as they are uh, by, doing this well? by the way by the way like you saying that uh, uh, anyone can become president but however there, there will be a time of elections if today the traditional leaders hold their people back just imagine the whole country no one is voting how would you, as a president, pronounce yourself as elected? How would you make it like nationally and internationally? That would be the crisis in the country, but within the presidential structure only. So, because we don't have one culture, <laughs> not one tribe. That, 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 some people will go and vote. Some people will not go. So I, it's a problem. It's a cultural problem. I said that at the beginning of this interview that uh, the only reason that pushed them to act in the betray in, in the way like uh, betraying the other group the other tribes is the fear of losing their benefits it mm. is the fear of losing their benefits through power so if we assure them that no one is going to lose anything that very same leader look when a president is in power he's creating this kind of enmity like uh, making enemies the people of his tribe to the other people not anyone is happy about that because they believe that on the day this president will fall, we will have to run out of this country. Now, if today they are offered a solution whereby you don't have to run, you don't have to lose anything, everything will share, will be shared among us equally. All we have to mm -hmm. do is to change the political system. That very same president will lose support. He will mm -hmm. lose that support. Yeah. Yeah. The ruling tribe is assured of not being prosecuted in any ways. They, they, they will they will let that leader down because what's the point of me spending my whole life killing the other tribe, stealing from the other tribe, being hated by the other tribe that it is your leader who's not doing well? What what is what do I gain from that as a person, as well? even as a soldier or even as a minister? You know, I'm a minister. I'm earning a living. I'm having some kind of benefit, and here again. Under Afro democracy, I still keep dogs. And Mr. Okocha, it will, it, will, it will even be more than what they make. That's because here is the country taking our resources, sending the huge portion of that overseas. Yeah. And we are left with a few. Just because that president fear for his crimes, he fear for his life. Now, the presidency is no more. We have Afro democracy in the country. Now, all the resources depends on the traditional leadership. Nothing will be going out again. So if the country is making 100 billion out of the resources, the entire amount will be within the country. So the, the small, the, the little that minister is making will be even more under the Afro democracy. So which way will they go for? They will go for the presidency or for Afro democracy. So I've put facts down there scientifically that they just have to sit and reflect themselves. They will go for Afro democracy no matter what. Of course the they will. will be let down. It's just of course they will. And driving the message out. 
I have that conviction. Wow. <laughs> the only loser is the worst. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. David Johnson. Mr. David Johnson is the author of um, The Afro Democracy. It's a trending book. You can get it on Google, from Amazon, and from different bookstores. Just go online and type Afro Democracy, the new African order. It will take you to his book. His name is David Johnson from Johannesburg. David Johnson, in our next topic, we'll be talking about the power was stolen from the people. Mm -hmm. That is our next topic. The power was stolen from the people. And in that next broadcast, we are going to talk about how these powers was taken from the original owners mm -hmm. of it. And why we are clamoring and needing the crusade that the power should be returned mm -hmm. to them. Because from the day the power was taken away from the people up to today, they have been chaos. They have been anarchy. They have been insensitive to the cries of the people. So that word democracy is questionable mm -hmm. because if it's not the government of the people, it is not, it is not by the people and it is, it is not, not generally for the people. Mm -hmm. So I have problem with that word democracy. So mm -hmm. I don't even want to hear that word democracy <laughs> because no, he, <laughs> he understand because it doesn't go with the definition mm -hmm. of what it is. Mm -hmm. So that is why in our next um, broadcast, we'll be talking about how the power was taken away from the people mm -hmm. and why we must return it. Just in a few um statement or sentence what do you have to tell the audience before we end the broadcast now what i will say thank you mr okocha what i will say right now it will be in line with the topic you are just announcing <laughs> okay we cannot do uh, 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 ourselves uh, better without addressing the issue of tribalism we shouldn't take that topic in a bad context in the theory of tribalism I define in the theory of tribalism. I mean, I define tribalism in two contexts. There is tribalism as such. There is influenced tribalism. So the one we face today in our countries is the influenced tribalism, whereby we have frictions among ourselves. I've developed that in the theories of tribalism in my next book. By the way, how the power was taken away and why we want it back. We're going to address that, but by also touching the issue of tribalism. As our national, as, uh, as black people, as Africans, it's not according to the republics. We've demonstrated that through our own ways. Mm. It is not from the republics, but mm. it is from our lands, from our tribal lands. So my word today is to Africans to ask themselves about their true identity. Who mm. are they? They are not surely according to their passport. That is fake. That is a lie. That is dictatorship mm. from the West. You are a Nigerian because you carry a Nigerian passport. <laughs> Who are we? What is our true identity? That is what I'm leaving behind in the minds of the viewers. I guess okay. from now on, we'll take it further to the next topic, Mr. Okocha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Johnson. Thank you so much for having me. I really, I really enjoyed this conversation with you, honestly. And okay. I think there is a lot of idea in this. And we'll continue to talk about it and to share this idea. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much again.